David Thornburg, President and CEO of the Committee of 70 Philadelphia's longstanding advocate for better government and better politics in Philadelphia and in Pennsylvania. We have a primary election coming up May 21st, you may have noticed. A lot of folks running for office, uh, candidates for city council, city commissioners, other citywide offices. The way we look at it, running for office is a job interview. So we've taken it upon ourselves to help you out and conduct a series of job interviews. Uh, now with city, uh, with uh, candidates for the office of city commissioner. And uh, I'm joined today by one of those candidates, Dennis Lee. Dennis, welcome. Welcome. All right. Uh, and we're going to take a few minutes, about 15 minutes, to, to hear from Dennis about his uh, past, present, and future, as it were. Uh, but Dennis, let me start with this question. This is the most fundamental. Okay. And uh, it's a question that's particularly important for this office because of I think if we walked around, you know, any part of Philadelphia, most folks have no idea uh, what the city commissioners do. So that's my basic question to you. What's your version of what this job is? And more important, why are you running for it? Well, first of all, let me just say thank you to a committee of 70 for mm -hmm. allowing me to interview for uh, one of the most important jobs, more, most important elected offices in the city of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. This, the basic um, responsibility of a city commissioner is to put on free and fair elections and to protect 1,048,000 registered voters, their vote, making sure that their vote counts. Uh -huh. Now, why am I running? I'm running because I have the skill set. Uh, my past, I was former uh, chief deputy city commissioner. Uh, where, uh, for Stephanie Singer, right? For Stephanie Singer. Day-to-day yeah. uh, -day operations was uh, my responsibility, uh, making sure that we do voter registrations at schools, uh, faith-based organizations, uh, businesses, as well as the prisons, uh, as well as election day troubleshooting. Mm -hmm. So the job of the uh, commissioner should be to make sure that people are aware that there's an election coming up. And I think we can do a better job at that. So my basic, my basic uh, platform is voter education, mm -hmm. voter registration, and voter participation, because I believe democracy is in trouble when people aren't voting. Mm -hmm. So just talk a little bit more about that. Uh, easy to say, difficult to do. Uh, any particular thoughts as to the role that the city commissioners could play in registering voters? Because by the way, both parties, particularly around elect uh, presidential elections, put out their people with their iPads and their clipboards and so forth. But What's the, what's the particular role that the city commissioners have in well, that I, aspect of the job? Well, I think that the city commissioner should be that beacon, that leader that makes sure that civics is back in, into the schools. Mm -hmm. uh, so long term is voter education. That means civics in elementary, middle school, and high school. We do a disjustice when we ask 18 year olds to register and vote. and We haven't had that conversation. So mm -hmm. I think one is being an advocate of voter registration in, in and what I just uh, described. I think also the city commissioner has to be an advocate in the state legislature about uh, updating the election code, mm -hmm. which has been around since 1937. And it needs seems to be like updated. yesterday. Though. Yeah, it seems like yesterday. However, 1937 is a long time and it impacts us on our absentee ballot, on our absentee applications mm -hmm. uh, with the deadlines. We need to update that. So mm -hmm. city commissioner, role is to be an advocate for new uh, new policies, new uh, legislation that's going to uh, make the uh, voting experience for the voter better. Okay, so there's sort of a nuts and bolts election day, make the trains run on time, and then as you said, your view is you're, you're also to be an advocate, an advocate for change. Okay. Uh, advocate for change and also being that, you know, most people don't know uh, about the city commissioner's office and what we do and what we have to do. Uh, we have to increase our marketing budget. Mm -hmm. We've got to increase our marketing budget so that we can year round uh, let people and inform them of the, our accessibility, uh, inform them of what our duties are. So what's, again, picture yourself in office. So just think about what you would do day to day, week to week. 
what, again, what's the most effective way that you can think of as a commissioner of increasing the visibility of the office? Like, well, what, do you, what do you actually do? Well, actually, uh, the first part of being in that office is that we've got to update uh, the integrity uh, protocols. We've got to train our we got to train our staff. We got to train everyone in uh, the polling facilities the updated integrity because we got to build that integrity and, and make sure that the public feels that their vote is being counted. Uh -huh. Number two, I, I think that uh, on a daily basis, uh, we've got to partner with different organizations like the Committee of 70, like organizations that have been doing this hard work, right? We've got to come alongside of them mm -hmm. and support them in a, in a, in a way that uh, shows uh, positivity, that voting matters, getting voting back on everybody's agenda. Right. And I think that that's a day-to-day -day, uh, day -day job. We've got to make sure that the day-to-day -day operations, that that when that registration form comes in, that it gets uh, updated in a timely manner so that people do not lose out on their right to cast their ballot. Okay. So I think d making sure that we're checking all of those systems and making sure that we're having these town hall meetings so that people can understand what we're doing and that we can get feedback from uh, the, the uh, citizens about how we could do our job better. Right. More communication. So we've taken a look at uh, other jurisdictions around the country, around the, uh, even around the Commonwealth. And it's clear that uh, some folks do a much better job, in our opinion, of actually reporting to citizens after the fact how we did on Election Day, uh, how the election process worked. Is that something you'd commit to, uh, sort of a, what they call in business an after-action report? It's, Use this in the military too. Exactly. You, you have a maneuver, and your question is, how do we do? So, is that something you would absolutely, be interested in a absolutely. We we did it um, when 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 I was in office with uh, Commissioner Singer. One of the things that people do better when they know uh, how they did, and we do better when we find out what we did, what, how we can improve that voter experience. Mm -hmm. But that's what I re related to in terms of town hall meetings. Right. That would uh, that would give a data analysis of how that area, how those areas voted, as well as how we can improve on that, and taking a survey of how their voting experience was on election day. Okay. That's very key. Do you know we've been doing a survey like that the last few cycles? A Absolutely. Voter experience survey. And, and one of the things is that we need to partner with organizations that do this good work. I mean, some of this work we can work together on. We may not have, we may not agree mm -hmm. on everything that every organization does. We gotta agree that the voter experience has gotta be the best experience that a voter can have. Yeah. And we've gotta use every data that we can to make sure that we're 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 checking our we're dotting our I's and crossing our T's. Right. So one bit of data that we know in 2016 is that there were polling places in North Philadelphia around Temple University where voters had to wait for three hours. So A, how, which all the research and common sense is that turns people away. If you're at the tail end of that three hour line, you're going home. <laughs> exactly. Nobody, I mean, as dedicated as you might be. So my question is, how do you avoid that in the future? We know that there's another presidential election coming up. We'd be on your watch. How do you avoid that? Well, one is that we got to make sure that everybody's trained properly. And the training has to not only happen twice a year, it's got to happen year round. We've got to figure that part out in terms of making sure that webinars and everything. So part of that is training. Mm -hmm. The other part of that is make, making sure that our systems are updated enough so that there, there's not long lines in terms of determining uh, who is eligible to vote at those locations. Uh, then we have to, uh, as well, inform the public ahead of time any changes with the polling places. Okay. And a lot of times uh, there are, there are re reasons for changing the polling places. Right. However, we need to partner with agencies to, dissimilar to when there's a emergency, uh, with PICO or with PGW. You get those annoying text messages at get, 3 o'clock in the morning and tells you that there's a thunderstorm coming. Well, you know what? <laughs> Whatever it's going to take yeah. to make sure that the public is informed, I would rather people being upset with an annoying text than them not knowing exactly where they're voting at that yeah. day. All right. Let me turn back uh, to a little bit of a reflection on ask you to think about your, your career and your accomplishments to date. Uh, so you're applying for this job, city commissioners. What have you done in your 
uh, career that you think is that, that you're proud of and you think is relevant to this position? Sure. Um, eight years as a city uh, committee person, uh, eight years working for uh, Senator Hughes doing his community and economic development, meaning a lot of public uh, engagement. Uh, I was uh, chair of uh, WPFSI during the time that we built the shopping center uh, at 52nd and Jefferson Park West Township. And it gave me an opportunity to work on large budgets. Mm -hmm. uh, that shopping center cost about $57 million uh, to build. Uh, and it's worth over a hundred so million. So I've dealt with large numbers. Mm -hmm. The city commissioner's uh, office has a budget of 10 million uh, and uh, is responsible for, as I said before, about a, a million plus registered voters and making sure that their vote count. Uh, listen, being, uh, being a, uh, something tragic really happened in my life in terms of what caused me to have a passion for working for people. My son was murdered. And I had to decide then to either stay on the sideline or get off the sideline mm -hmm. and get into the fight. Mm -hmm. And I've been serving the public since that time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think my commitment and my drive for wanting to serve the public, I want to be a leader that's a servant leader, not a leader that serves themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think with all of that qualifies me to uh, be the next city commissioner. Got it. Got it. So, uh, Let's fast forward. You get elected. It's now April 2023. Let's say you're running for a re-election or maybe you're hanging up the spikes. What would you say as specifically as you could uh, that you'd been able to accomplish uh, between, you know, the time you took office and the time you were uh, up for re-election or for the second uh, second job interview? Well, I tell you, um, I, I think that uh, elections will be just as excited as city of Philadelphia was excited for the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, civics uh, would be back into the schools. We would have that partnership taken care of. The integrity of the election, the training uh, for our staff, the training for our poll uh, workers uh, would be uh, uh, bar none uh, mm -hmm. a, a fantastic and the election day experience in terms of the voter experience would be much improved yeah. we would have had uh some legislation uh put forth uh, not sure if it would be approved but uh to update that uh, uh election day code uh, 1937 and i think overall that uh the partnership with uh various uh organizations and entities that do this work uh, for getting people out to vote, getting information to vote would be much uh, improved. Yeah. Just uh, back on the sort of advocacy side, uh, and then we've we got to wrap up in a couple of minutes, but um, you talked about, you know, part of the job is taking a message to Harrisburg and representing a million plus voters in Philadelphia about how things ought to change. Um, what, what's, what's top of your list in terms of modernization uh, of the election code or other changes we should make in the voting process. I mean, people talk about absentee ballots, um, uh, vote centers, um, early voting. What's, well, your, I, what's I, your sort of top uh, top list? Uh, I, I think uh, the top list is same day uh, registration, vote, uh, voter registration, uh, early voting. Uh, I believe that 16-year-olds, uh, 16 16-year-olds 16 and 17-year-olds should be pre-registered. Uh, I think that would, uh, enable uh, them to be ready by the time they're 18. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, absentee, uh, the deadlines for absentee uh, applications and, and, and ballots need to be updated. Now, I think we were something like 46,000 absentee ballots that came in in 2016 that were ineligible because they came in too late. Right, and so, you know, the, the, the bottom line is that Philadelphia is the largest voting block in the state of uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, naturally, our absentee uh, uh, rate of uh, denial is higher than most uh, any other county. We've got to improve that because anytime we disenfranchise a voter, right, it touches a lot more than just that vote. Yep. A, a quick answer because we're uh, coming up on our time, but uh, uh, city commissioners voted a few weeks ago to approve new voting machines. Uh, that the governor had mandated uh, as close as he could to, that they'd be in place for this fall. Do you agree with that decision? So, uh, uh, and if, if not, uh, I, why not? And what would you do? Okay, I totally disagree with that. Um, 
decision. First of all, the city, sitting city commissioners should have recused themselves because they were a candidate on February 19th. That's number one. Number two was not enough public, uh, not, not enough public input to make that decision. Uh, we had since 2013, we knew that we were going to, we needed new uh, voting systems. Right. We should have done surveys. We should have done more to get that uh, message out. So what I would have done uh, in, in terms of uh, looking at new voting systems, I would have did a survey uh, with, uh, with public input. I would have had town hall meetings okay. with public input. We only had two. And those two were not used. We only had two public hearings, which were not used in the decision to uh, pick those uh, voting systems. Got it. We've got to put a wrap on All our right. uh, discussion, but thanks for joining me. Thank you, and sleep. thank you to Committee of Seven. All right, good. Well, just again, as a reminder, we have a primary election coming up May 21st. I hope this interview with Mr. Lee has been helpful to you. If you want to learn more, go to our World Class Voting Guide at uh, Nonpartisan Voting Guide at 70.org or download our We Vote app, in which makes it possible for you to hold in the palm of your hand everything you need uh, to be a super voter on May 21st and beyond. Uh, so thanks for joining us, and we'll see you at the polls.